Hey everybody, this is Pablo with Mattress Makers. I'm here with my brother Gabe. Hello. In this episode of Mattressology, we're going to talk about the three reasons why your mattress may be making you sick. So let's go. This is a very important episode. They're all important episodes. This is an especially important episode. And the reason why is because this is talk, talking directly with your health. And we decided to do this video because with my customers I've dealt with in the last couple of weeks, I've had two instances where they've talked about their mattress making them sick and maybe affecting their health. And then somebody just the other day sent me this article that was from the Los Angeles Times. It says, how a mattress in a box left one family with health issues and $20,000 in damages. I thought it was time for us to do this video. In our experience, what we found, there are three main reasons where your mattress can be making you sick or could be affecting your health. And these are the three things to look for when shopping for a mattress. The first thing that we see that probably one of the most obvious things that can affect your health in the mattress, or at least one main ingredient is, what do you say, Gabe? They're gonna be the foams. The foams. Right, the yep. foams that's made uh, with the mattress. And that's what's in most mattresses, right? What kind of foams? Because I okay. think almost everything is foam. There's a polyurethane foam, and then you've got memory foam, of course. That's in more mattresses nowadays, too. Yeah, let me show you what we're talking about. So, and if you guys have seen any of these cutouts in mattress stores, this is what you're probably used to seeing. This is polyurethane. There are a million different types of polyurethane. There's different colors, different looks. They feel different. What is the base of polyurethane? It's petroleum, yeah. yeah. It's a petroleum base. Yeah, it's a petroleum base, you know? It's just a plastic. Dipping on different colors, different, I mean, different formulations, you know, they're all gonna have its own unique feel. Memory foam has been very popular. It's viscoelastic, but at the end of the day, it's still polyurethane. Even if they have, they say it is a natural foam. Yeah, yes. You see a lot of greenwashing on regarding the foams, or you have a soy base or an, an aerated Cool Max foam. Yep. I mean, there's just all these things that they're just renaming polyurethane foam, right? Yeah. They trademark that name. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of equate it to the analogy I like to use is like bread. You got a million different types of bread. You got wheat bread, you got white bread, you got rye bread, you got sourdough bread, you got pumpernickel bread. But at the end of the day, it's still bread. That's kind of like foam. You know, at the end of the day, it's still foam. But what's the biggest problem with foam? The problem that we see, you know, is from the beginning is like, at least when you're talking about the what, what to be concerned about is the chemical off-gassing, yes. right? You know, like that new car smell, right? With the foams, yeah. it just lingers and people have to leave it in their garage and, you know, for for a couple of weeks. I had a customer say for two months and it's still there. That smell on foam, yeah, that's that off-gassing of the chemicals. I mean, I'm sure you guys have all had that experience where you buy something new that's like a plastic base or foam base and you just have that smell. And when you sit on it, when you lay down on it, put pressure, there's on a cellular level, this like little windows, I, I like to say, that it tends to, to break inside the foam and that also releases more of that gases. Some people have really high sensitivities to that, that really affect your health. You may not notice that your health is affected, but common sense, if you're up against this thing eight hours a day, six, seven, eight hours a day, out of a 24 hour day, eight of those hours, a third of that day is on your mattress, your face up against that thing, it may affect your health you know, and you're breathing or down the line, it may not affect your health when you're young in your twenties mm -hmm. or thirties, but when you get to the forties, fifties or beyond, it starts to take a toll. So the foam is a big part. So what's the alternative to foam? Yeah, the alternative would be, you know, natural materials. You got yeah. either all cotton, right? Yep. That would be one way to do it. If you just use that in the uh, the comfort layers or yes. um, what we use is latex. So natural latex, rubber, yep. that would be the, uh, as far as feel and comfort wise, giving you that pressure relief, I mean, Latex, I believe, does a better job than cotton because cotton would just start matting down and get really firm, right? There's a lot of ways to go natural. There's a lot yeah. of ways. I've seen buckwheat. Uh -huh. I've seen wool. I've seen you know a lot of different ways that people go go natural. It doesn't the comfort is subjective, but like the longevity, durability, and support. The one that we landed on is latex. More people are familiar with foam inside their mattress. Either they say, "Hey, I have a pillow top bed," and that pillow top it's usually polyurethane foam, right? Yep. Or they got that bed in the box. Typically, there's going to be just foam inside of it. So if they like that feel, but they don't want to be exposed to those chemicals, this was this will be the safe alternative. Yeah, latex I say is probably the best kept secret in the industry, just because it's been around forever. It's been around since the 30s. You know, it was really big in the 60s and the 70s. But when the plastic industry started to boom, mattresses went from latex and cotton and wool to more of the synthetics. People, when they think of latex, they do think of a chemical. They think of rubber gloves or paint, you know, but it's actually, it is the white milky substance from the rubber tree. Kind of like maple syrup, how you see it. It comes from the rubber tree 
And the way they do it is pretty cool how they do it. They put a bucket up against the tree and then they put a their little cut and it drips into the bucket. And the one tree can last you 20 years, can produce latex for at least 20 years. So it's very sustainable. But the biggest thing is, is that it's not off gassing. And we use natural latex. There's two types. I'm not gonna go into too much difference between the two types of latex. That's we've done on another video. But there is latex purity, and we use the, the all-natural latex because I assure you that it is going to have least issues. There is something to, to pay attention to with polyurethane that is kind of shifty. You just got to pay attention to it, which is an, an, one of the certifications that we'll see is called Certipure. Certipure. Yeah. Certipure. Yeah. We have a couple mattresses that have the Certipure, sort of, you know, not trying to bash on it, but however, it's not that clean. It's certified by the foam industry. To leave out some of these d different chemicals. These are like formaldehyde, formaldehyde right? PDEs, you know. Which was in like foams before. It could be found in fo in other foams, right? It's a cleaner foam, but it's not like latex. Right. I, I, am, I am not confident saying, oh, you're not gonna have any issues with a Certa Pure certified, you know, foam. Yeah. Just because there is still issues with Certa Pure certified foam, you know? Also, there's other issues in the mattress too that beyond the foam, which we're gonna talk about. But just because it says Certa Pure certified foam doesn't mean it's going to be clean yeah it doesn't so, mean it's natural or anything it's like natural, that natural yep also a thing what you see is the um inside foams the green tea infused yeah a lot of times that is supposed to be to mask right mask that odor <laughs> right well you you beat me to the punch you stole my thunder because oh my because like this article it talks about i mean i'll name names because you can find this on the la times it talks about um when the, the most popular amazon bed or at least one of the most popular amazon beds the zionist green tea this cu this couple they bought this green tea foam bed and this is where i get annoyed with the industry where we call it greenwashing i really don't like it at all they make it sound organic mm -hmm. they make it sound clean yet is laden with chemicals and the most common one is that zionist green tea at least that i've seen because it's so popular on Amazon. And you see, you see the word green tea on it, so you think it's healthy. Photos look fresh, yes. right? It yes. looks natural. I mean, you know, when we talk to customers, oh yeah, I have a natural bed. And then we say, oh, okay, what is it? And they tell us whether it be this one or it could be another brand, right? And yeah. it's like, oh man, that is so far from being natural, Yeah. right? You know, people are, you know, are deceived with uh, with that marketing, right? That, yep. Those little gimmicks. I'm gonna put a link in the, underneath the video um, to the article so you guys can see it yourself. So that is the foam. So foams. one thing to be looked at in the mattress is right. The foam, the right? foams, what kind of foams? And here, here's something very important. They might say they have latex in there. They might say they have this natural wool in there. However, I have see seen going. this too. See where you're going, Pablo. You're picking this up. I see where you're going. They might have, oh, this is this. We use all natural latex in here. We use all natural wool yet. What do we have right here? We have foam polyurethane. We see this almost in every video. A mattress is only as good as its weakest link. That usually pertains to like the durability of the mattress. But in this case, this also pertains to the cleanliness of the mattress too. Mm -hmm. You can have the best, but there is that weak link when it comes to this part still is going to off gas. It might have a latex on it, but if it has polyurethane, you're still going to have that same issue. We had a, you know, a customer that they came in testing their beds and this was for their boat. You know, we we're doing a custom one for their boat Yep. and they wanted a, a latex bed and they came back, gave them the pricing on it and they went to another outfit and and um, they said hey th their price is you know a little bit less expensive than your guys what's the what's the deal i'm like well let me take a look so i'm curious to see what's going on but yeah it was made with foam it was six inches of foam two inches of latex we're giving them full nine inches of latex huge difference big difference that's where the price discrepancy was at most of it was in the foam but if you're gonna use you know do this combination how do you keep it all together? This kind of leads us into the second one, right? Yep. Yeah, so so how would they keep these together from, from shifting around? They're gonna have to use some what? Adhesives, right? To keep this together, you have to glue it. Or you could tuft it. You know, as we talked about tufting in another video. Adhesives are the second thing to look out for. The glues that are in the mattress, that can really affect it. A lot of times you can still smell the glue yeah. from it. And that can definitely affect your health. That can definitely, I mean, that's probably one of the most noticeable things. Mm -hmm. Other than the foams, the glue is actually really noticeable. A lot of companies are gonna use, you know, something like this, like a, a can spray to, to mm -hmm. keep everything together. There are sprays which that do not do the same off-gassing, which they're water-based with latex in it. Those are actually better. They're better, yes. right, yeah, they're better. If you're looking for a mattress, ask what kind of glues is it? I doubt that the salesperson knows that answer though. Yeah. You know, that's why we, we recommend if you're looking for a mattress, 
get something that's like a little bit more smaller, local, you know, where they know they're, they're a bit closer to the manufacturer instead of a bigger, bigger, big box, because the closer they're to the manufacturer, the more that they're going to know what's in the bed. Yeah, they'll know the gel infused stuff like that yes. or the copper infused, but they're not going to know like yeah, the, the actual ingredients of it, right? Like if yep. you're concerned of the, the off gassing. Yep. So the glues can be really problematic. With our beds, we do not, at least the majority of our mattresses that we use with, with latex in it, I was probably almost close to 90%. Yeah. We don't use any glues mm -hmm. on it because we have a zipper top where you can actually change out that layer, keeps it fresh or keeps it intact. So the glues, that's the second thing to look out for is what kind of glues are they is being used. Yeah, and you don't want to be sniffing glue. You didn't do that to, you know, when you're in grade school, did you? It's been 20 oh, something kidding. years in high school, you know, <laughs> but and no, there's one reason why you don't, because then you end up with things like what I have what I struggle with. <laughs> no. so, yeah, you don't, you, don't, you don't want to put your uh, face to, one, the foams, right? You're six, seven, eight hours a night. Yeah. Then you're breathing in that glue. And by the way, I, I mostly ate the glue, you know, when that was more It was like, eating the glue, not oh, yeah. It was I'm eating the glue. Eat, <laughs> eating the glue. Now, I would say probably the biggest one, it's debatable, probably have the most issues with. And then if you read what's inside the ingredients, it could be the most scary too. What is it, Gabe? Uh, it's going to be your fire retardants. The fire retardants. Every mattress made in the United States needs to have have or pass a flammability test yep. there needs to be some type of fire retardant in it yeah in 2007 it was a federal law that every mattress had to pass the fire test the good news is that it doesn't matter how you pass it it just had to pass it easiest way to do it cheapest way to do it is with a chemical as a chemical based fire retardant just doing a little research and just re reading up on what are the, some of these ingredients are they're pretty scary there's a couple ingredients that really stood out to me it's called antimony and also the formaldehyde. Those are the two bigger, there's another one that's, there's a couple other ones that I just do not remember the names, but it is also pretty freaky in what it does to the body. It affects the thyroid, affects the immune system. And I think that's probably the biggest issue. Like that article that we that I was just referencing from, yeah. the, from the LA Times, a lot of companies too, are using fiberglass. Oh yeah, fiberglass. fiberglass. We've heard that a few times from yes. customers. Yes, their whole home was ruined. Like their whole wardrobe was ruined. Yeah, I remember a customer came to us in 2018. The reason why I know, remember 2018 because he just called in, got another mattress for their yes. home. Yes. And it was, uh, I looked up his previous order and it was 2018. And I'm like, yeah, I remember, you know, not gonna say his name, but he took off the cover of his mattress. They said it was washable. Yep. They threw it in the washing machine and it was fiberglass in it. Yep. Right, and all of a sudden they're like, kind of like itchy and stuff like that, like what's going on and started looking into what's in the cover and it was fiberglass. They had to, yeah, do some home remediation, whatever, they pay all this money. Yeah, I, I perfectly remember that that customer. Actually, there's been a couple customers that have similar stories yeah. that we've seen. And it just this article talks about how this little baby that she noticed little paper cuts on the back of her legs, on her chest, and they couldn't figure out what it was coming from, but it found out little shreds of the, the fiberglass was getting in. And they never unzipped the cover too, which is which is scary, you know? Outer protected cover is meant to keep all that stuff in. And they'll say, yeah, the fiberglass is safe as long as you keep the cover on but if it's going through the cover if you, if yeah. you take off the cover and it's still going through that's scary and permeated throughout the entire house like gabe was saying like this like this other customer we had and now there is a huge class action lawsuit that they're having with Zionists. not our customer but no 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 this, yeah this, this article is not our customer it's from somewhere else it just tells you that ask what kind of fire retardants yeah. are being used is it a chemical based fire retardant you know, is it a fiberglass based fire retardant? Those things can really cause damage with people, especially if you're really sensitive. If you're not sensitive, you don't want to become sensitive by being constantly exposed to this stuff, you know? And I hate doing the whole scare tactics thing because, mm -hmm. you know, it's not our style, but those are things that I have I have seen on a countless basis. Just be educated, right? It's not to yes. be fearful of it because there's options out there for people, yeah. right? But it's just to be, hey, okay, you know what? If I'm gonna go buy a new mattress, maybe I should try to avoid these type of materials. Yes, Right. yes. So what is there a solution? What we use is wool. Let's, let's grab, yeah, grab uh, it. Some people say I have a rough oh. time with uh, the wool, wool. So it's wool. We start off with an inch thick of wool. Yes. Right? And then we cool that into the fabric, into our covers. You know, that is what we use as our the fire retardant, right? So this yeah. is a good way to, I mean, one, it's got some good breathability. Yeah, that passes the flammability test. Yeah, wool, right? wool, in our opinion, is the best solution for the fire barrier. Like he was saying, it's very breathable, you know, but you have to have enough in it to make sure that it does pass. For some reason, it just does not allow the, the mattress to combust. So wool, not only just with the fire barrier, the fire retardant, but it's, and it's untreated. It's not like we treat it with chemicals. It is with 
pure wool. Also, like Yeb was saying, the, the breathability of it, how it does a great job of wicking away moisture. It's probably one of the best fibers that nature has given us. If we can't use wool though, what would be the next uh, option to use? If, then, you know, because we have mattresses, right, that are made without wool. So, well, here's another option that I would say, and I've we've had a couple customers bring this up, is they've had a doctor do a prescription on for their mattress so they say that they, they do not need to have any fire retardant. Mm -hmm. So you could actually go to a doctor, have them prescribe you a mattress that is that has no fire barrier at all. Whatsoever. That's true, yeah. Because we have a, the, our own factory, we, we make our own, our own mattresses, we have the flexibility to do that. It's happened several times. So if you don't want anything, if you don't want wool, some people are like very sensitive to wool, yeah. then I would, I would suggest doing that route. We do have a sock also, like a little barrier that we use on our mattresses, like a vegan mattress that does not have any wool and they don't want to do it. Uh, the prescription. Yeah. It's like a silica viscose type sock that goes around it or that is like a barrier that goes around it. It's not treated with any chemicals. You know, it has a natural base to it. Uh, I wouldn't call it organic or natural at all, but it, it, there is a natural base to it. That one does not off gas. That one does not have any of those little fiberglass fibers. So that is That's also- That's the next best thing, right? That, yeah. that would be the next best thing to wool. You know, if you didn't want to do the, the prescription. For those so, ones that want to, yeah, vegan, right? You yep. said is that want to avoid any animal products in it. That way would be- Yeah. And when I say vegan, there, there are, we do get customers that don't want a mattress with any animal products. So that's why I bring up vegan. Yeah. And it's also gluten free. Oh, so you can eat it. Maybe. I don't yeah, know. Never try it. We'll if you tried it, leave it in the comments. Those are the big three things to look for that may affect your health when it comes to your new mattress. Just recap the foams, mm -hmm. the glues, and the fire retardants. I hope this helped you guys. Um, I hope this made it a little bit easier on your mattress shopping journey. If you guys have any questions, just put them in the comments below. Hopefully one of us gets back to you. Or also you can download on our uh, download our shopping guide too, right? Cause yes. you know, you can, if you're watching this video, probably looking for a new mattress, download our free shopping guide, you know, yep. it gives you kind of like tips and what to look for when looking for a new mattress. And then of course, you know, if you watch this video is helpful, like, please subscribe to our channel. We'd love to, you know, interact with you and, you know, continue to produce some, uh, some new material for, for you guys. Well, thank you guys for watching. Sleep well.